Sure is hot, Cartwright. No relief in sight, either. Scorcher, all right. That's what's worrying me. You're worrying about the weather won't do any good? <laughs> uh, what may, may prevent my son Hoss from getting here with the cash on time. We got to five o'clock. Owner, is there any possibility of extending that deadline? I told you, Mr. Cartwright. We've already got another offer for that land in cash. Now, I can't risk losing that to extend your option. I could pick up that option right this second if you'd only accept my bank draft for 12000 I don't understand you being so stubborn about it. Look, since the drought set in, we've accepted too many drafts that have turned out to be no good. Like this one here. I've got a whole drawer full of them. I'm sorry, but my clients insist on cash. Uh, cash. It wasn't such a good piece of land. But it is, Mr. Cartwright. And you know it. Yes, sir. Sure is a hot one. Don't make a move. Name's Deadman. I'm the county sheriff. Well, I'm sure glad to see you. Getting a little jumpy with a lone rider coming up on me out here. What do you got to be jumpy about? Well, I mean, with the drought being what it is, there's quite a few hard cases roaming around. Yeah. Sorry about the gun. How about a cup of coffee? What's that for? I like to have a look in those saddlebags. Any objection? I ring I have much choice, do I, Sheriff? Move back. You've got a lot of money here. I'm delivering it to Scotchburg for my paw. It's a land deal. You can prove that. Of course I can. Suppose you come with me and we do that. Come where? Dutchman's Flats, about eight miles yonder. Sheriff, look, I gotta be in Scotchburg at five o'clock this afternoon. You'll make it. Unless we stand here all day arguing about it. What are you going to charge me with? I could charge you with building a fire on range land or something more serious. Like what? Like maybe you're part of the gang that held up the bank at Dutchman's Flats and killed a teller. Now, you want to get on your horse and let's get this thing over with?
Well, it sure ain't much of a town, is it? It's a hot one, I'll say that. You could stand a cold beer. Yeah. Morning, Milt. Morning, Jess. I can't remember it being so hot for so long. Too long. Everything's burnt to a crisp. Yeah, that's very... Jesse. Now, Milt, I know what you're going to say. I must ask you again. If I can't extend credit, the farmers and ranchers are going to have to move out. And I can't do anything about that unless you give me a loan. Milt, you know as well as I do that since the robbery, the bank is almost without funds. Jesse, you've just got to do something. You're the banker in this town. People depend on you for help. Well, don't you think I know that? Well, then why don't you do something? What are you just sitting around for? Now, wait a minute. I'm getting sick and tired of you and everybody else in this town blaming me for this robbery. I lost as much, if not more, than anybody. Remember, it was my own son-in-law who was shot and killed. Now, that's all you have on your mind, Milton. I'm sorry, Jesse. It's just that I've got to say no to all those farmers that come to the store all the time. I told them I'd talk to you. What they don't understand is there's nothing I can do. If I only had a little more time, I've tried to negotiate a loan from every bank in this territory. But everybody is hit as hard with this drought as we are. Then I say this town is going to die. Just as sure as that dang sun comes up every morning. How's Marianne? How do you think she is? Her husband dead? Good day, Mary Ann. It's nice to see you about again. Well, Connie? I'm sorry, Larson. Wait a minute. Don't give me that. The bank just turned me down. Look, I got a house full of kids, and I'm not going to let them go hungry. I can't give you what I haven't got. I got it right from a feller that talked to a feller who knew the brother of one of the men that was right there. Hockey, it was two bears. You know what he told me? I'll tell you what he told me, son. He told me there was grasshoppers. Millions of them. Fifty miles north of here. Just chewing up everything in sight. All right, you know what? Here's my eye. Them grasshoppers is going to be down on us as sure as shooting. There ain't no grasshoppers north of here, mister. Who told you that? Ain't nobody told us that. We just rode through there yesterday. And I say there's grasshoppers up there, millions of them. And I say there ain't. That storekeeper, that no good tight rut hypocrite, he won't give anybody any credit. Well, it's the drought. That's what's the trouble, Ned. It's that bank robber laid this town low. I tell you, them robbers got all their money. Yeah, there's nothing being done about him. Sheriff Stedman, he's riding all around the country, finding nothing. You, 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 you leave the sheriff out of it. I work for him, and he's a good man. Oh, let me wear a gun. Yeah, I know, I know. I was in the bank the day it happened. I could have prevented the whole thing. Yeah, Shooky, it's too hot to go through all that again. Yeah, but I mean... I've heard it 900 times in the last few weeks. Yeah, but I still could have prevented the whole thing. Yeah. Fight! <laughs> fight, fight! I'm coming! <laughs> Million grasshoppers? Yeah.
minute, wait a minute. It's too dang hot to fight about, grasshopper. Well, you're right. Have a beer. Wasn't much of a fight. Better no fight at all. Uh, at least there was a little excitement, huh? Uh, <laughs> come on, Ted, let's get this place back together. Not much. Just hold it right there. All right, get down. All right, inside. Yeah, it must be something. Riding a $50 horse. Gee, sure is a big man. Oh, sure is. Just like the one who... Like one what? I gotta give the sheriff a hand. What's going on, Sheriff? What does that fella do? Caught him starting a fire on Rangeland. Says his name's Cartwright. Oh. All right. Oh, now, Sheriff, come on, will you? Stole it? The sheriff knows where I got the money. Look, sheriff, I gotta be in Scottsburg in three hours. The sheriff's too smart to turn you loose. You might be a bank robber or some sheriff, such. Sheriff, look, all you gotta do is send a telegraph to the land office in Scottsburg. My Paul verify my story. You, you're awfully fidgety for an honest man. Chucky. Yes, sir? Go stable a man's horse. See that it's rubbed down. Right away, sheriff. Hey, Chucky. Uh -huh. Who was that the sheriff caught? Says his name is Cartwright. You know, he had $15,000 in gold in them saddlebags. 15000 in gold? Uh huh. You think he stole it? Wouldn't surprise me at all. Of course, he said he didn't, but being the sheriff, think he's lying. We're going to hold him in jail for a while. Um, I got some things to do. See you later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Barber. Hey, McCray. Barber. McCray. McCray, listen. Stedman's caught himself a good one this time. You mean that fellow he brought in a while ago? Yeah, he had better than $20,000 in gold in his saddlebag. You know who he is? Well, his name is Cartwright or something like that. Listen, I'll see you later, okay? Hey. He must be the one. Hey, make yourselves home. I'll be right back. $20,000, huh? Well, you're not in any of these wanted posters. That ain't too surprising. Sheriff, are you going to send that telegram or not? Yep. I guess I'll send it now. I wish it wasn't so blasted hot. I just want to congratulate you. About what? Oh, now, don't be so modest. Yeah, let's uh, step in out of the heat for a minute. Sit down, Sheriff. Take a load off your feet. No, thanks. I haven't got much time. Larson tells me you caught us a big-time desperado. 
You mean that Cartwright fellow? That's right. The whole town's talking about it. That was pretty slick, catching him red-handed that way without even having to fire a shot. And I hear he was carrying 25,000 in bullion. 12,000, to be exact. Just about what they took from the bank. Just about. But that doesn't make him one of the robbers. No, but if he did turn out to be one of the robbers, that'd be quite a feather in your cap. Might even change this town's opinion of you. I'm going to send a telegraph to Scottsburg. If they back up his story, I'm going to let him go. Sheriff, just having that fellow in jail has had quite a stimulating effect on this town. Do you have to be in all that hurry to send it? Tom, I was just telling Connolly about that fellow you caught. Yeah. yeah, sure sounds like he could be one of the fellows who robbed the bank. All I know about him is what he's told me. You know, Sheriff, I never thought you'd do it. Do what? Well, do something about them robbers that ruined this town. Yeah. Well, we believe you now, Sheriff. And when the next elections come up, we'll be remembering it. We'll just do more than that. We'll buy you a drink right now. No, I... Come on, Sheriff. Some come, on, come, come on, come on. Come on, let's, let's drink. drink. Come on. Howdy, Sheriff. Glad to see you. Let me buy you a drink. Yeah, hi, Sheriff. You deserve a free drink. You know, it's all around town that uh, you're pretty sure that Cartwright's one of the gang that robbed the bank. I didn't say that. Well, you're not saying he ain't either. It's all right, Sheriff. Shooky said he recognized him. Did Shooky say that? Well, not in so many words, but uh, we knew what he meant. Well, just having him in jail makes me feel a lot better. Me too. Got to hand it to you, Tom. <sighs> Thanks for the beer, man. I got to send a telegraph. Shooky, have you been telling folks around town that this fellow we got in here is one of the bank robbers? Well, I, I was in the bank when it happened, you know. You could identify him as one of the gang. Well, no, I, I, I didn't say that. I just said that one of the robbers was a big fellow, is all. If he was to go on trial, would you swear before a judge that he was there? Yes, sir. I could rightfully say that one of the robbers was a big fellow and that he killed Fillmore's son-in-law. You could, huh? Sheriff, are you going to hold him for trial? I don't know. I've got to do some checking. You stay here. You mean, you mean sit here and, and guard a desperate killer without a gun? Behind bars? Oh, nevertheless, it ain't right. It just ain't right. I know, I just know that if I had a gun that day in the bank, I could have prevented the whole robbery. Sure you could. Sh -sh Sheriff? Fillmore, I've been puzzled. 
What did you mean when you said not to be in any hurry to identify that prisoner? Oh, it wasn't important, Tom. I just uh, figured that maybe what this town needed was a good kick in the bridges to get moving again. And just having this fellow in jail might do just that. It hasn't been proven that he was one of the gang. I know that, Tom. But there's no harm in him just sitting there, is there? No. Tell me. If it turned out that he was one of the gang, what would happen? He'd go to trial, of course. I know that. What I mean is the money. It would come back to the bank. That would just about put this town back on its feet, wouldn't it? It certainly would. And you would be the man who did it. Marianne, honey, you shouldn't be out in this heat. Mr. Connolly told me you caught the man who killed my husband. I'm afraid everybody's jumping to conclusions. Sure, I have a suspect, but so far I haven't any proof. Proof? Everyone in town knows he's the one who did it. Are you just going to sit around doing nothing as usual? Now, Mary Ann, the sheriff has done all he could. Has he? Your husband was a friend of mine. Honey, I don't want you to upset yourself. These last few days, you seem to be coming out of it. I don't want you to start brooding again. I'm going over to the jail and see the man who shot Ed. Now, you heard the sheriff say that he had no proof that it was the killer. Will you come with me or not? killed my husband. I told you before, Mrs. Wilson, we're not sure. Ma'am, I ain't killed nobody. Get Shuki Summers in here. Now, Mary Ann, don't make a fuss. He was in the bank at the time of the killing. Maybe he can identify him. I have already talked to him about it. Now, I think we ought to let Shuki make his identification at the proper time. If we go dragging him in here now, we're liable to scare him into making a mistake. Sheriff, my husband has been dead for weeks. Will you please get Shuki in here and let him prove whether this man is the killer or not? Get him, Sheriff. He can tell you I'm not the killer. And maybe you'll let me out of here. Shuki? Yes, Sheriff? We want to see if you can identify the prisoner as the man that killed Ed Wilson. Chef, I... Shuki, come on. Just go right over well, you here. You see, Mrs. Wilson... Come on, Shuki. Oh, Shuki. Take a good look at it. Now, look. Now, Shuki, you look at him and see if he isn't the man. Look at him. Well, it's... It's been a little while ago. Well, Shuki... You were the only one who was in the bank at the time. Don't you recognize him? But I didn't get a good look at him. You never saw me before today in your life. Now you tell him that. Shuki. You be sure. Oh, Shuki. You're the only one who can help me. Now, please. You know he's the man. Please help me. That's the one I saw, all right? I can't understand it. I shall be here by now. Maybe you never got your telegraph. Yeah. I better check on that. You know, you still got a little time on your option. Well, right now, the option isn't important. My son is. And except for your stubbornness about cash, I wouldn't have to be worrying about him now. I'm sorry, but that's the way it had to be. Well, uh, I thought I recognized him when he first came into town. Yeah, well, you sure did the town a great favor, Shooky. <laughs> yeah, you sure did all right, Shook. <laughs> you know, that means we might get our money back. Yeah, yeah. for you. 
Come on, we'll take it down by your beard. Yeah, come on. Oh, come no, on. no, I, I gotta stay here. Uh, oh, he oh, wants me to stay here. Come here, come on. Let the widow through here, fellas. Come on. Right through here. Let the widow, let the widow. Oh, Tom, uh, how about letting us take a look at him, huh? Yeah, how about it, Sheriff? All right, now, all right, boys. Let's get... no, wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. We gotta do this orderly now. Okay, now. All right, all right you go. Now. Yeah, you go. Uh, okay. All right. You thief and murder. Uh, don't talk to the prisoner. Keep him moving. <laughs> They're gonna hang you, sure. I said, don't talk to the prisoner. Keep it moving now. Let everybody have a chance here. Uh, don't talk When's to the trial gonna be, people. Sheriff? The circuit judge won't be around for a few weeks. <laughs> That'll be something. And the hanging. I don't want to miss that. I'm afraid you won't see that, McCray. Look, Keep it moving. Why not? He Keep held up at the prison. Was that for sure? For sure. Shoot. I was counting on that hanging. Hmm. What happens to all that money? Go back to the bank as soon as the judge releases it? Why can't you go to the bank now? The town could sure use it. Because it's a law. That money stays right in that safe until the prisoner's found guilty. It's a shame, seeing as how it's our money. Uh, don't talk to the prisoner. Keep him. Yeah. That's a shame, McCray. Why don't you get out of here? Shooky, get these fellas out of here. All right, now, everybody, keep moving. Everybody, out. Everybody. Come on, Art. It's the thought of that cartwright makes my blood boil. Him and that $50 horse. Yeah, well, I've been thinking of cartwright, too. Can't you just imagine the high life he's been living? The liquor he's drunk, the women, the fine food he's been eating. Oh, he's had it real good. You can bet on that. That is gravity, though. All that stolen blood money. Ain't gonna get away with it. Oh, he's probably gonna get off. My law wouldn't allow anything like that to happen. Yeah, men like him use the law, Ned. You get a smart lawyer and... Uh... Yeah, yeah, sure. Now, why didn't I think of that? Them outlaws know all the ins and outs. Why, they could even... They... That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Why, he can't get away with that. It's up to good people in this town see that he don't. Nothing's gonna happen. Unless maybe, uh... Maybe you've got an idea, Ned. Well, I might have. Yeah. Yeah, just might have. I've never seen it so hot. You know, Tibbs, that old jail over there ain't nothing but an old broken down cracker box. Yeah. 20,000. Sure is a powerful lot of money. That's a lot more than I've ever seen. Me too. You thinking what I'm thinking? When it gets dark. Larson here's got something important to say. Yeah, I sure do. Listen, that thief and murder sitting up in our jail, that 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 quite right fella's gonna get off scot-free if we give him half a chance. He's right. Yeah, he's right. Ed Wilson was a friend of yours, and he's a friend of mine. I say it's up to us to punch the fella that shot him down in cold blood. I say we take care of that fella ourselves. That's right, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. What's all the shouting about? Hey, 
ain't sure, but I got a pretty good idea. Sheriff! 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 You gotta do something about it. I mean, they're up there talking about, about a lynching. Lynching? Oh, that's probably just talk. <laughs> Not just talk. I mean, they're gonna do it. They're talking about putting a, putting a rope around his neck and, and lynching him. Sheriff, you gotta do something Show about me it. You're drunk. <laughs> Now, you get inside, get some coffee, and sober up. I'm gonna need you. And you, you get over to that saloon and try to talk some sense into those fellas. Well, you're the sheriff, Tom. Isn't that your job? There's a telegraph we didn't send that just might have proved that man in there is innocent. Hey, what's all the ruckus out there? Uh, oh, no, nothing. Just, uh, just some of the fellas whooping it up a little, is all. Huh? How come you ain't whooping it up? Oh, Sheriff said he wanted me to stay here. He said he needed my help. Your help, huh? Like the way you put the finger on me? Well, uh, at least you can do it. Give me a cup of that coffee. Sure. Here you go. Thanks. Why did you do it, little man? Cartwright, put him down. You go get some sleep tomorrow. Uh, Ain't a man here didn't know Ed Wilson. There wasn't a finer man in this town than Ed Wilson. Now, how many of you fellas got hurt when this, this Cartwright fella stole all your money out of the bank? We gonna let him get away with it? No. Well, I say we ought to string him up right no, here and listen, now. Listen to me. Listen. Oh, you shut up, Fillmore. I won't. Well, then get out of here. Let's listen to what he has to say. Uh, Men, we cannot take the law into our own hands. Oh, wait a minute. You're going to listen to a man who won't help his own neighbors? No. 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 You're going to listen to a tight-fisted money grubber that won't give any of us any credit? I can't give you any credit. I haven't anything left to give. Now, Ed Wilson was my son-in-law. And if he were here now, he would say to all of you, don't stain my name with blood. I agree with Mr. Fillmore. Now, you keep out of this, Conley. Now, please, all of you, go home. Before you do something you'll regret for the rest of your lives. Buy a drink. Let's show more. Oh, money bags. I shouldn't have listened to him. He don't care if this town dies. Yeah. Forget it. It's all over. Might as well go home. Buy you fellas one more drink on the house. Yeah, all right, Ned. Might as well. Nothing's gonna happen anyhow. That Cartwright's gonna go free. And tomorrow, things are gonna be just the same. It's gonna be hot. Fellas busted in here and tried to free that Cartwright. Is that true, Sheriff? We heard him coming to me and the Sheriff drove him off, but one of them winged the Sheriff. We'll organize a posse and take after him, Sheriff. Go on home. We'll get some guns and be right back, Sheriff. I catch you with guns, you're gonna be right in there with him. Sheriff, sure, go down to the saloon and get me some whiskey for this arm. Right, Sheriff. What were those shots? Cartwright's gang tried to bust him out of jail. Yeah, I knew it was gonna happen. I knew it was gonna be just a question of time. Will somebody come up here and try to bust him out of here? Now, you want to make one of your fancy speeches about the law taking its course? Now, listen to me. Don't you now listen to me, money bags, and you keep out of this, you're going to wish you had. Let's round everybody up and meet at the saloon. Wait a minute. Oh, Wait a minute. minute. 
You all right, Tom? I'll live. You think those men were really trying to get Cartwright out of here? Well, it's a cinch they were trying to get in here for something. Well, that could prove that he was guilty, couldn't it? It also proved that they were after that $12,000 I got there in the safe. Sheriff, I had no connection with those two men, and you know it. You're a liar. A dirty, rotten liar. Marianne, I wish you would stay out of this. I can't stay out of it. Now, listen to me. Tom is still not sure that we have the right man. Not sure. Well, I don't care if you're sure or not. Because he's going to get it. You're going to get it, big man. You might be able to fool my father and the sheriff here. But not for long. Because there are other men in this town. Real men. And they're not... Look, you listen to me. They're not going to let you get away with it. They're going to come in here and drag you out. And they're going to put a rope around your neck for killing my Ed. Mary Ann. Don't touch me. Sheriff, the men's gathering around the saloon talking lynching again. Shut up. What's he talking about, Sheriff? It's all that talk about lynching. Just some of the boys down at the saloon got too much of this loud mouth. I can handle it. You can handle it. Sheriff, you know I ain't guilty. You know it. I said I could handle it. You got nothing to worry about it. Didn't me and the sheriff drive off those fellas and try to bust you out I here? told you I didn't have nothing to do with them fellas. Sheriff, you and me can sneak out of here the back way and, and take a little ride over to Scottsburg, and my Paul will prove to you who I am. Oh, you think he's going to go ride through the night with you and let something else happen? Will you shut up? What kind of a man are you, anyhow, Sheriff? A mob down there talking about lynching, and you ain't even willing to try to find out who I am. Well, them men busting in here prove pretty much who you are. Shucky, shut up. Go close the door and lock it. Where's McCray with that rope? Fillmore, you go home. Please, Ned, we're not sure he's guilty. We're still not sure. Well, maybe you're not sure, but we're sure. We've been sure all the time. Listen, you're not bad. Oh, keep right money back. I told you to keep out of this. Now you go home. Will you go home? Go home! Hey, I got a nice thick one. Strong enough to hang a steer. Are you ready? Let's go over the money. Come in here and take our money. Shut up, everybody. This ain't a carnival. We got a job to do. So help me God. All right, Shiki. You're a deputy, and here's that gun you've always wanted. What do you want me to do? You're going to uphold the law, and that includes resisting lynchers. Oh, I, I can't do that. I mean, Lawson and McCray, they're our friends. When you're a deputy or a sheriff, you got no friends. Who is it, and what do you want? Ben Cartwright, let me in. Holy Mike. Paul! The devil's going on here. Get his gun, Chucky. I want to talk to my son. Oh, is he all right? Fine, Paul. What's happening here? I just came by the saloon. They're talking about lynching. What did you do? Paul, I didn't do nothing. Their bank was robbed here several days ago, and a fellow got killed, and the sheriff... Thinks it's me. 
put me in here and put our money over there in that safe. This is my son. Well, your son is suspected of murder. How do we know you ain't part of his gang? Two of them tried to bust him out of here. Shot the sheriff for I'm doing it. Chuki, shut up. Go outside and see what's going on. You all out of your minds. If your son's innocent, he'll go free. What about that mob out there? Are they going to wait for any proof of innocence? What about them? We'll take care of them. Who? Oh, how? You and your deputy alone? Let's get it done. Yeah. 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 Here they come, Sheriff. You stay here. I'll talk to them. Talk to them? A simple telegraph could have established my son's identity. I got a telegraph from somebody called Fillmore. That's how I knew he was here. Fillmore sent you a telegraph? Yes, at Scottsburg. Bolt this out. Now, just a minute, Bolt. We think we just got proof that the man we got locked up in there is not the man that shot Ed Wilson. A little late for that, Sheriff. If he does turn out to be innocent, you're going to be sorry about this tomorrow. Quit talking, Tom. Get him out here. I can't do that. Now, you don't get out of the way. You ain't going to be Sheriff no longer. But I'm Sheriff now. Now, you folks, go on home now. Gonna shoot us, Tom? People that elected you to office? Try me. Tom, these are, these are your friends and neighbors. Come on, Pete. Come on, get him out of here. take a man's life, my son's life. Now, let me tell you something. You don't want to take his life. You want the money that was stolen from this town. Well, in that jailhouse, there's money, a lot of it. It belongs to me, but you can have it, all of it. Just give my son one more day. Let him stay in that jail for one more day while I prove his innocence, and then you can keep the money. No strings attached. Just give me the time. Money! That's all you think about, the money. No one thinks about my husband. No one thinks about Ed. Don't you see? This is a trick. It's, it's a trick to stall for time. They broke that man out of jail once a day, and they're going to try it again. Are you going to let it happen? Larson, listen to me. What this man has said is right. You're all my friends and neighbors. I know how you feel, but please... Don't do this terrible thing. I say hang them. Hang both of them. Cut him down. Oh, you're all alike. You're do-nothings. You're cowards. Well, I'm not. The man who killed my husband isn't going to get away with this. Marianne, no. No. <laughs> Somebody get a doctor.
All right, you're satisfied? Get on home. Now you lie down easy now. It's not a bad town, Mr. Cartwright. It's just that they quit being people for a while because they're hot and they're dry and they're broke. Yeah. I'm... I'm sorry, son. Cartwright? Yes, sir. Tether my horse. Now, this man you're looking for, you, uh, you say you lost track of him ten years ago. That's correct. His sister recently received a first letter from him, postmarked Virginia City which he stated that he sometimes does odd jobs at the largest ranch in the vicinity. I've ascertained that your Ponderosa fits that description. Yeah. Oh, this is one of my son's horse. Horse, I'd like you to meet Colonel Dunwoody. We've already met. Uh, if I may ask, why do you want this man? He's wanted for desertion by the United States Army ten years ago at Snake River. My orders are to return him to Washington for a military court-martial. After 10 years? There's no statute of limitations on desertion. Well, you, uh, you haven't told us the man's name, sir. Well, I consider it extremely unlikely that he was used his right name. However, fortunately, I have a daguerreotype. You recognize him? Well, it's hard to tell. The picture's pretty faded. A man is at least 10 years old if people change. And they can't have changed that much. We hire a lot of extra help in the Ponderosa. They, they come and go. Huh? With your permission, Colonel, I'd like to keep this and do some checking. May I remind you, gentlemen, that withholding information from the federal government on a case of this kind is subject to rather severe penalties. If you have any information, I will be at the Virginia City Hotel. Good day, gentlemen. It's Bill Winters, Paul. I'm going to go warn him. You'll do no such thing. Else. But, but, Paul, we've known Bill ten years. We're not going to let the Colonel take him. Colonel says he's a deserter. Yeah, but why did he desert? Hey, Pa! Hoss! Get out here, quick! I just rode in and found him hanging over the rail. Let's get him into the house. Hang out at the bottom of that house. It's been a long time since they had any trouble with Indians. Just show me. Going in two inches lower to go all the way through. Yeah, but we got a problem. What do you mean? Well, we tell the Colonel about Bill Winters, or don't we? Of course we don't. That means that we're withholding information from the government. I'm not sure we should get mixed up in this. Paul, the way we know Bill, we ain't got no choice. Now, who on earth could possibly gain anything by bringing to trial a man who refused to massacre innocent women and children? 
I could, Mr. Cartwright. Colonel, you shouldn't be out of bed yet. Oh, evidently not. Did that statement surprise you? Frankly, yes. It shouldn't. You see, I was the commanding officer who ordered that so-called massacre at Snake River. so much noise. Can't you see your father is talking to Mr. Cartwright? Oh, we were just playing, Ma. Yeah, well, you just play somewhere else, huh? Go on. You too. You stay for a cup of coffee? Oh, thank you kindly, Maria. I had breakfast just before I came over. Well, then you can use a cup of good coffee. Hop Singh is a pretty fair cook, but coffee is not one of his specialties. Well, if it isn't too much trouble. No trouble at all. Long about now, Bill's about due for his 14th cup. Oh, don't just stand there talking, woman. How am I going to teach the children any manners when their father just hasn't got any? <laughs> Good morning, father. I've got some breakfast for you inside. Morning, Wayoka. So Shawnee's no. He knew five minutes after the colonel arrived in town. Yeah. Figured it'd probably be a waste of time, but I had to come over and tell you anyway. What do you aim to do? I don't know, Ben. He's bound to find out where you are. I realize that. I want to thank you for going to all this trouble. You never asked to hear my side of it yet. That's up to you, Bill. I was his lieutenant. I was second in command. When he told me that he planned on making a surprise attack against the Shoshone village, the Snake River, I told him, I said, I was, I was, I was ready to fight Indians, but not to make war against women and children. He told me I was sentimental, he said that the only thing he wanted to do was to make sure that no white settler was ever molested by an Indian again. Now, this he proposed to do by setting an example, one example, a horrible example that all Indians would remember. That's true. He deliberately set out to destroy the village. Deliberately. He also informed me that as a, a soldier under his command, I had no right to question his orders. I bet you don't have to say anything. No, 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 no. I want to I want to tell you, Ben. That night I sneaked out of the camp and I went down toward the Shoshone village. First one I ran into was Maria. She was washing some clothes down by the river. I put my hand over her mouth and I told her to run and tell the people what was going to happen. As a result, some of the people escaped with their lives, including Maria and her father. Unfortunately, the majority of them had no reason to trust a white man. They stayed on. I can still hear the sounds. The Shoshone have never forgotten. I'm afraid your guest is in very dangerous territory. Bill! Bill, please come here. Hurry. What's the matter? Ben, get 
Get your horse. Come with me. something to eat. Colonel, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just don't understand you. How can you, how can you dog a man for 10 years? Crime has nothing to do with his crime. He should have been punished long ago. And his desertion was a blot on my record as a commander. A humiliation I have endured for 10 years. Well, I intend that humiliation to end. You're perfectly willing to sacrifice this man to justify your slaughtering an entire Indian tribe. I understand from my inquiries in town that your own mother was killed with an Indian arrow. You go warn the colonel, I'm gonna circle the house. Save your life. That's also the man who deserted me at Snake River. How can you be sure after all these years? Mr. Cartwright, I can recognize my own son. Her son? Yes, is that so strange? Yes. It seems strange when a man is so intent on destroying his own flesh and blood. Then I suggest that you read your Bible, Mr. Cartwright, the story of Abraham. It is now apparent to me that you were familiar with the object of my search all the time. You men now have a choice. You can lead me to my objective, or you can suffer the consequences of your own obstructionist tactics. I will give you one hour to decide. <laughs> Bill, do you want me to pack our things into the wagon? And run? Where would we go to, honey? We could go no, up... No, no, no. For ten years now, I've been afraid of this. Every street I walk down, every... every morning when I get up... No, if it's gonna come, I want to get it over with. No, Bill, no. We can go away. We can go up into the mountains. We can go so high they'll never find us. Members of my tribe would take us in. They'll protect you. And the children. Maria, there's something I haven't told you yet. <laughs> what is the meaning of this? Why do you break into my house like animals? 
Let him deny what he has done. You, come with us. By whose order? By order of Keokuk, chief of the Shoshone. No! For what reason? What for? Tell her. Tell her how you saved the life of the killer of our people. Tell her! I know that. I sent him. If you had killed the colonel, it would only bring further reprisals against our people. No. Tell her the real reason you saved him. That is the real reason, Maria. To prevent further reprisals. But also because he's my father. Understand a man feeling that way about his own son. Well, he gave her the answer. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son to God, but the Colonel's God is duty. I can respect a man's sense of duty, but I always figured that in a good soldier it was tempered with some kind of understanding. Well, I would say the Colonel's qualifications as a good soldier leaves a great deal to be desired. That won't stop me from trying to reason with him. You'll be wasting your breath. Ben! Mr. Cartwright! Let me in! Help me! Where are you coming? Ben, help me. They took Bill. They came and took him away. <sighs> Who took him? Shoshone. Maria, they, they probably took him away to protect him. To kill him. I would doubt that. Yes. They'll kill him because he's got your blood in him. That may be, but they won't kill him. They won't risk another lesson like Snake River. Why did you come here? Haven't you done enough to us? I have no interest in your people. I came to take my son back to Washington to face up to his crime. Crime? You talk about crime? You murderer. Now you go back to your people. And you tell them that if they harm my son, They'll face a worse punishment than they knew 10 years ago. I wish you were dead. I wish Running Wolf had killed you last night. I... <laughs> She's like all Indians. All emotion, no intelligence. That girl is your son's wife. You confess you are the son of the blood enemy of our people. He was your enemy, but that was 10 years ago, Chief. Now, that was the time of war between the Shoshone and the white man. This is a time of peace. He talks of peace. While well, the bones of our women and children rot on the plains, and the murderer dares come back to mock us. You are quick to forget what your father has done. I think it is you who forget, oh wise shaman. You forget it was I who deserted the white man's camp to warn you. You forget to whom you owe your life. Did you forget too, chief? Whatever you have done, you remain a white man and the son of your father. I am more Shoshone than I am white man. Have I not married into your tribe? Wyoka? Wyoka, am I not a good husband to your daughter? 
a good father to your grandchildren? Then what of my grandchildren, those whose cries I can still hear? Chief Keokuk, you're a great warrior. Now, you were wise in the ways of war. What my father did, he did as a soldier, as a way of war. Massacre is the way of a soldier? You know, terrible as it was, I have come to understand that my father wished to set an example to end this conflict with the Indians once and for all. Kill him. Kill him now. Silence. It is the way of the white man's government to end war by killing women and children. And it also will be Keokut's way. By killing the son of the white warrior who killed our sons. You who have such great understanding will know that Keokut bears you no ill will and is grateful for past favors. But by the time the sun rises once more in the east, you will die. Keokuk has spoken. Keokuk has spoken. He knows, but he will not speak. Will you tell me where they have taken my husband? He is not your husband. He, he is not my husband. Then those are not my children. They have never been born. They do not exist, huh? Better for them if that were so. Hear me, old man. This is no time for games and secrets. You tell me where you've taken him. He will die before another sun has risen. They cannot kill their friend. Shame and disgrace. It was not your fault, my daughter. You did not know. No. I only know that I love him. Don't say that. I don't care who he is. I just know what he has been to me, to the children, and to you and all the Shoshone. Better to have died than to all my life to such a man. I love him more because he had the strength to do what he did. Tell me where they've taken him. I cannot say. You will tell me! I cannot say! Then get out of my house! He is still my husband, but you are no longer my father. I order you to go. Priya, you know he can't tell you. Wayoka, I want you to arrange a parley between Chief Keokuk and me. It will serve no purpose. Let me be the judge of that. The Shoshone know me as a friend. I ask as a favor. I will try. That's all I can ask. I make no promises. I cannot speak for Kyokok. Then how am I to know? Return to your home and wait. I will deliver your message. They're taking their time sending an answer. I'm afraid you're wasting yours, Paul. As soon as they find out Bill's his son, they're gonna be up. They're gonna be right here. Yeah? What makes you so sure? The Colonel's the man they want, and the Colonel is here. Well, if Keokuk agrees to see me, he won't do anything until after we've talked. I know him. Well, I hope you're right. Put the gun away, Adam. 
Yes, I quite agree. Firearms will not be necessary. I'm a little surprised in you, Colonel. I figured with your son being held prisoner by the Shoshone, you'd get a troop of cavalry together and storm them like you did at Snake River that time and finish up the job. That'll do, Hoss. Have you thought what you're going to say to Keokuk? I'm going to plead for your son's life. And remind them that Bill's their friend. We're all their friends. Won't work. It's worth a try. Bad strategy. You'll gain nothing by telling Chief Keokuk Bill's his friend. He knows that. He's not going to kill him because he hates him, but because he's my son. That's his way of answering my attack on his village. There's only one thing that can influence a mind like Keokuk's. My life in exchange for my son's. Well, that's very interesting, Colonel. I didn't think you had a father's feeling for a son. I'm sorry to disappoint you. The move is not an emotional one. It's based on strategy. Well, it's ridiculous. We're certainly not going to exchange one life for another. And I'm afraid, sir, you do not understand the Indian mind as well as I do. But I think I understand it well enough to know that I have a chance to plead for Bill's life. But if I had to plead for yours, it would be hopeless. Like you're going to get your answer, Paul. I'm going outside, Colonel. I think you'd better stay in here. You're wasting your time. Send a message. You wish to speak with me. I had intended to go to see Keokuk. I'm honored that he's come to see me. And about what did you wish to parley? Well, you know that. About our friend, Bill Winters. You surprise me, Ben Cartwright. You've always been a friend to Keokuk and to the Shoshone. But you already know I will not parley about the son of the man who murdered my people. One moment. Hold! I told you he wouldn't listen to you. But I have a bargain that will appeal even to your kind, if you will hear me. I will hear you. My life in exchange for my son's. It is a trick. I said you can't do this. I am going to do it. Well, it's a simple enough bargain. And one that you should like very much. It is well. Tomorrow at the setting of the sun, the soldier with the pale eyes will present himself at the Shoshone camp. And the other will be released. No, first you release my son. Then I will surrender myself to you. You wish us to release the cub so that we might capture the lion. Why should we believe you? Why should I believe you? You can kill two as easily as one. Enough of this! Tomorrow at the setting of the sun, the prisoner will be taken to the front gate of his home. You, Ben Cartwright, Keokuk Trust, you will bring the murderer of my people, and there the bargain will be made. Otherwise, your son will die there. That was a devil's bargain you made, Colonel. What do you mean, a devil's bargain? If somebody's got to die at a heap side, rather be the colonel as, as Bill Winters. I don't think that's what he meant. What did you mean, Paul? You mean, you think the colonel's got some sort of a scheme? No, I think he's perfectly willing to give up his own life for his son. And if he dies, what do you think's going to happen to Keokuk and the rest of his people? 
Yeah. I reckon the army would wipe them out, wouldn't they? But won't they do the same thing if they kill Bill? No. Bill is a deserter from the army. Probably go unnoticed. But if the colonel dies, there'd be a pretty big to-do about it. And he knows it. You mean he's willing to die just so more Indians will die? I think the colonel intends to do exactly what he came out here to do. No matter what it takes, he'll see to it that his son is returned to Washington for court-martial. And that includes sacrificing his own life, if need be, to keep Bill alive to face court-martial. time. I hope they are as prompt. Okay, Cook keeps his word. I keep my word too, sir. It's not just a man's word that's important. It's what motivates him. And this need of yours to avenge yourself on your son, it's not human. If you have been analyzing my motives, Mr. Cartwright, you're a more subtle man than I thought. But your opinion is of no consequence to me. Doing down here? Did you have anything to do with the Shoshone freeing me? Well, the important thing is that you are free, Bill. You've filled out some. You're looking well. I haven't many vices. How's, uh, how was Mary? Your sister's well. I asked her to write me care of general delivery. Yes, I know. She didn't answer my letter. I advised her not to. I see. I suppose I... Uh, I should thank you for saving my life. No need. Evidently, your friends didn't approve. This is, uh, this is my wife, Maria. Yes, I know. We met before. you to meet somebody. Come on, Eddie, you too. Eddie? Edward. I named them for you. I didn't know you had children. Well, I guess there's no way I could have told you, is there? And I assume we are as far apart as ever? You're still my father. I named my firstborn after you. Pa? Is he really your pa? Yeah. He's your grandpa, too. No, he isn't. My oak is our grandfather. Well, he's your grandpa, too, honey. This is my youngest. 
Her name's Maria. Little Maria? Edward? My grandchildren. Also the children of a Shoshone. Kids into the house. Come on. Go with your mommy. Come on. All right. Would you ride with me, please? Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't do that. You can't give up your life for mine. That is not precisely my intention. You don't understand how they, they, they feel about you. They're gonna kill you. They'll, they'll, they'll torture you. Neither prospect frightens me very much. Some 10 years ago, I gave you an order which you disobeyed. I'm giving you another order now. Go to your house with your wife and children. But it's not an order, it, it's my request. Now, what are you gonna do? I'm going with him. And risk two lives instead of one? And your father is right, your place is right here with your wife and your children. Ben, Bill, you just make things worse. I'll go with him. I'll, I'll do what I can. If you're not back here by dawn, I'm coming up. I'm going to go with you. Because I need your help. Help? I think you're beyond help now, Colonel. And don't forget, when the soldiers come to avenge your death, your grandchildren are half Shoshone. I know. That's why I must not die. How do you intend to prevent that? By pleading for my life. They won't listen to you, not one word. They will listen to you. A little late for that kind of thinking, isn't it, Colonel? Perhaps, but will you try? Well, you know I'd have to do that. Thank you. I'll explain what I have in mind on the way. has gone from the sky, O oh great Chief Keokok. Where is your warrior with the pale eyes? He will appear was the price of the life of his son. Take care of my part of the bargain first, Mr. Cartwright. Biggie, 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 Keokuk, you have the power of life and death over the prisoner. 
But before you decide, there is something he wishes to say to you. There is nothing he can say to me. And if you will not listen to him, listen to me. There is nothing you can say for him. I gave my word that I would speak for him. Speak. We will listen. Speak. I would like to remind you that the Colonel did what he did in time of war. And in war, just as your braves must follow your orders, so the Colonel must follow the orders of the great Nantan in Washington. And he was ordered to punish the Shoshones, to bring peace to the territory. But the massacre of women and children was not the way to bring peace. That is true. The Colonel realizes now that he was wrong. He wishes to amend that wrong. But if you kill him, there will be reprisals. And more Shoshone will be killed. Among them, more women and children. And how does the Pale Eyes hope to make amends for the wrongs he has done to my tribe? He will go to Washington. He will return to Washington and he will admit so that everyone can hear that he was wrong in attacking your village. He will say that such attacks can only bring more hatred. They can never lead to lasting peace. And he will apologize to your people. Apologize? Will that bring back our wives, our children? No. But it may save the lives of other Indian women and children. Words. Words! They spill from his mouth like poison! <laughs> Silence! How can I be sure the Pale Eyes will keep his promises? If I were not a man of my word, would I be here now? White man lies to save his own skin! <laughs> and if you were chief, what would you do? I would kill him. You would kill him, knowing that many of our people would be killed in return? Even so, do you feel no love for your people? I feel only hatred for their murderers. Look at him. This man one day will take my place. He cannot rule himself, and he wishes to rule others. Hear me, Pale Eyes. I hate you more than any man. More than Running Wolf hates you. For he does not understand as I do how great was your crime. But ben Cartwright speaks good words, honest words. If I kill you, and many more of my people will be killed in turn, and more of yours, and again mine. Let history record it was Keokuk who put an end to this senseless chain of killings. And let history record it was Keokuk who brought peace to the Shoshone. Hey, Lies. You will promise to tell the whole truth to the great Nine Tan in Washington. I swear it. And you may go. None of my people will harm you. I have said none of my people will harm you. Go!
Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Did anybody see those parcels I brought back from Virginia City? Now, would uh, one of you be kind enough to deliver these to my son's house? Well, Colonel, of course, we'd be very happy to, but... Uh... my court martial. There's no need. We're tired of living in fear that somebody might discover his real name, sir. If it weren't for his love of us and his concern for my people, he would have gone back a long time ago. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you both. And I think I can promise your husband back within six months. Six months? For desertion? Since I am the chief and only witness for the prosecution, by the time I get through explaining the circumstances, they may very well present you with a medal of honor. Now, I have something for little Edward. Thank you. And little Maria. Thank you. Open them. Thing to remember your grandfather by. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright, and your sons for helping me see the truth. Are you ready, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Howdy, mister. Oh, hi. I was going to think the place was deserted. I wonder if we might use a little of your water. Help yourself. Sure there's a storm blowing up out there. Could be. Night coming on, I wouldn't want to be caught in it. I wonder if I could spend the night. No, can't spend the night. Uh, be glad to stay in the barn. No, this is private property owned by the stage line. I run it. And I say you can water your horse, fill your canteen, and leave. Can't do any harm in the barn. I promise I won't disturb the chickens. Now, I ain't fooling, mister. You get. Put away that gun, Grandpa. You get back in the house. I'm sorry. I don't like to have a gun pulled on me. This is still private property, and you're still trespassing. Oh, don't mind Grandpa. He thinks every man that comes by here is going to grab me and ride away. Well, that's what you want, ain't it, Marty? That's it, ain't it? Maybe. Maybe that's the only way I'll get away from here. 
Uh, now, listen, I didn't mean to cause any trouble. I just want to bed down for the night. I'll be gone in the morning. Oh, here. And be careful with that thing. The next fellow might take you seriously. Now, you get in that house and stay away from him. instead of there. I want you to listen to me, young miss, huh? I don't want any more trouble with your grandfather. So I think it would be best for all concerned if you just turned your little old self around and went back into the house, all right? Grandpa's asleep in the chair. Does it every night after supper. I've been watching him do it for eight long years. Yes, well, I... Still think it would be best if you, uh... I didn't come here to see you. I came here to get one of my books. Oh? I hide them in here from Grandpa. Why do you hide them? Because they're about places. What kind of places? I'll show you. This one is about New York. It's got pictures in it, too. Have you ever been to New York? Mm Mm-hmm. Really? What's it like? Well, it's uh, big, noisy. It's got lots of people. Yes, that's what I thought. Lots of people. I bet it's like all the big cities, Rome and, and London and Paris. My grandpa doesn't want me to know about those places. Watches over me all the time. Don't want to even talk to anyone. Especially boys. And men. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think you ought to blame your grandfather. I think most men feel protective when it comes to their daughters, granddaughters. Especially when they're pretty. Like you are. My mother was pretty once. I'm sure she was. She hated it here. After my father died, she used to stand out in the yard and watch the stage go. She used to say, someday I'm going to get away from here and never come back. And she left? Yes. A man came in on the stage one day and he was handsome and rich. He promised to show Ma the whole world. Think she'll ever come back? No. I don't want her to. Oh, really? Well, she got what she wanted. She got away. I drew this of her just before she left. It's very nice. You have talent. How long have you been doing it? Ever since I can remember. I make my own charcoal and use whatever paper I can. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. I don't even know who you are. Well, I don't even know who you are. I'm Marty. Marty Johnson. I'm Adam. Adam Cartwright. Been up on the Humboldt River, checking out the range. On my way home. Where do you live? Ponderosa, about 100 miles from here. 100 miles. I have been more than 10 miles away from here. I'm beginning to think I'll never get away. Oh, yes, you will. One of these days, some nice young fellow's gonna come along and take you away to those wonderful, mysterious places you've been reading about. Will you take me with you, Mr. Cartwright? No. Why not? 
Well, first of all, your grandfather would have the law right after me. If my mother was able to do it, why can't I? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you. Who are you? My name is Cody. I've been running from that storm out there. On foot? <clears throat> no, my horse broke his leg in that gully back a few miles. I'd appreciate it if you give me some shelter for the evening. Well, uh, this girl's grandfather runs a place here, and uh, I'm afraid it doesn't take too kindly to strangers. As a matter of fact, he pulled a gun on me when I asked for the same thing. Well, I, I gather he didn't persuade you to leave. Yeah, just thought I'd warn you. I'm warned. Are you afraid of visitors like your grandfather? No. But Grandpa runs the station. Well, uh, you mind if I have some coffee then? I'm kind of uh, cold and hungry and tired in that order. Come in the house, both of you. You are sure you want to do this? You know how Grandfather feels. I want to. Well, this ought to be interesting. Marty! 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 What are you doing down here? Now you go on and get in that house. I'm going to tan your hide. You're right. He's downright unfriendly. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Name's Cody. Well, like I said to him, this here's private property. Ain't nobody staying here. Now go on and get both. Don't. Put it back. I told you about that gun. I was just saying to the young lady here, I'm kind of cold and hungry and tired. And I think I'd be a lot more comfortable inside the house. So let's go, huh? I've heard of the Bonderosa. It must be um, pretty soft on a big spread like that. Well, if you consider working 10, 12 hours a day for oh, 20 years to build it, I guess maybe you're right. Well, there are uh, quicker ways of getting rich, friend. Oh, I'm sure there are. Which way are you headed? The border. I got a little uh, deal down in Mexico. Mexico? Did I hear you say something about Mexico? Yeah, what about it? Marty is interested in faraway places. So was her mother. Look what happened to her. At least she had the courage to get away from here. My mother's been all over the world. A couple of years ago, I got a letter from Paris. Mm, I hear that's a great old town. I bet she really did some living there. Can't you shut up? Now, you stop talking to her like that, filling her head with fool ideas. Oh, what's wrong with you, old man? You wanted to wind up an old woman regretting the things she's never done? Well, now, you talk just like the man that took her mother away. You all talk big! She's my granddaughter, and I don't want her hearing it. No, I don't think words can do her any harm, Mr. Johnson. Well, your uh, protecting is very touching, Grandfather. What's she protecting you from, Marty? Everything. And everybody. He thinks he's going to keep me here the rest of my life. Someday I'm going to get away. And end up someplace where nobody cares what happens to you. Anything's better than being locked up. Well, you got spunk, honey. Don't let anyone ever tell you what you ought not to do. You understand, don't you? Well, yeah, I can understand why you'd want to get away from this. Take me away. Marty! What? I could go with you to Mexico. <clears throat> Look, kid, uh, I'm traveling fast, so I have to travel alone. Well, you could leave me any place, any place. Oh, come on, Marty. You know better than that. Use your head. Please, mister. We could use our horses from the corral. Oh, no, you won't. Who's that? Where are you going? Now, where do you think I'm going? That's a stage coming in. I have to take care of it. Stage this time of night? It's late. Way late. Will you mind your own business? What's the matter, Luke? Something wrong? 
No, no, nothing's wrong. Just think it's kind of a strange time of night for a stage to arrive. It's four hours overdue. Probably got caught in the store. <laughs> Whew, I ain't never seen the likes of that wind. <laughs> Hi, Marty. Uh, who they? Oh, uh, the storm blew us in. Uh, but uh, we're leaving in the morning. Sure is a humdinger. <laughs> Horses can't be no time at all. We stopped at Juniper Hole for a couple of hours, figured they'd let up a little, but it didn't. Well, you better get going, Leif. You're way late now. That's right, Jesse. So late, in fact, a couple of hours ain't gonna make any difference. Well, I ain't running no hotel. But you're running a line station, and line passengers are important. So you just end up with all that chatter, Jesse. We're staying here till morning. Think you can fix us up a little bit of grub, Marty? Sure. If Grandpa doesn't... Well, Grandpa can't do anything about it. He works for the stage line. Oh, man. How many passengers are there? Just two. Guess that's all there is. What difference does it make? None, no difference at all. <laughs> Terrible out there. I've never seen such a wind. How long do you think it'll last? You never can tell, but you'll be able to travel through it come daylight. Ah, uh, wait better. I gotta get to San Francisco before the week's out. Oh, stop worrying, Tim. The job will be there. I'm Lucy Fisher. My pleasure, ma'am. I'm Adam Cartwright. Hmm, smells good. Well, we have a very good cook here. Adam Cartwright. And Tim. Well, well. Luke Martin. I haven't seen you since St. Louis. Uh, what is it? Three years? Just about. How are you, Lucy? I'm fine, Luke. Martin, huh? What are you doing out here, Tim? Now we're on our way to San Francisco. I got a job managing the new Palace Saloon, if I ever get there. Now, I'm going to check on that driver. No. What? Stay in here. What's the idea? If you're on your way out from St. Louis, you've been hitting the same towns I have. So you're staying in here. Livestock, and I am do the same thing to myself. <laughs> What's everybody being so quiet about? Let's get to them vittles. Wait. This is Luke Martin. Don't. Why did you meet the bossy? When we stopped at Juniper Hole. They're staying there till the storm blows itself out. I figured the storm would delay them as much as me. Well, we might all as well make ourselves comfortable. Two guns on the table. Down at the end. All right, now step back. What you for, Luke? I killed a man.
How much uh, money the kids thought it would up? Five thousand dollars. You must really want you, Mr. Martin. Boy, that worthless weaseling kid sure wasn't worth that. He was a liar and a cheat, and he deserved to die. His pa didn't think so. Well, I thought so. And now that you're running, do you still think so? Well, what do you know about it? You weren't there when the kid came across the table with a knife in his hand. That's self-defense, isn't it? Well, not in that town. And that's why I'm running. And that's why I have to travel alone. Well, listen, it's going to be a long night, so let's all sort of relax and enjoy it, huh? Sure spent the night in better places than this. Come on, Marty, let's get that food on the table. What about the posse? Well, they don't know where I am. They'll wait the storm out back at Juniper Hole. Take them about uh, three hours to get here after they start. And besides, if I left, Tim would head right back for the posse. Wind or dust or storm. Wouldn't you, huh, Tim? $5,000 is a lot of money. Don't anybody uh, start counting it yet. You know, Marty, you're an awful good cook. Where'd you learn it? Not much else to do around here, except maybe feed the chickens. Well, anyway, you're good enough to make a living at it if you had to. A girl as pretty as Marty doesn't have to worry about earning a living as a cook. I'm not that pretty. You sure are, honey. Anytime you want a job, you just look me up in San Francisco. I pick the girls. I do the hiring, and don't you forget it. But I pick the girls, and don't you forget that. From the looks of the girls you've picked lately, you must be getting afraid of competition. Listen, you. There ain't a girl from St. Louis to San Francisco that had put up with the stuff I've taken off you in the last ten years. All right, all right. Knock off that chatter out there and bring in some more coffee. What kind of a job are you talking about? Well, it's not for you, Marty. Well, anything's better than this. You got a lot to learn, kid. I've known plenty of nice girls that work the bars. Some of them married pretty good, too. Don't listen to them, honey. Anytime you want a job, you just come and see me in San Francisco. Thanks. I will. Men. You're all alike. Don't pay attention to any of them, Marty. <laughs> Think the posse's gonna take a chance on this storm? Seems to be dying down a little. Well, I tell you, I'm a gambler, friend. And I've got a long ride ahead of me. I think I'm gonna stand a lot better chance when the storm is over. Besides, they're lawmen. They're not after bounty money like our friend Tim here. Lousy 5,000 bucks, you risk getting yourself killed. Maybe I ought to make you pay for the chance you took, huh? Why shoot him? Why not? He deserves it. Maybe. Where does it end? Well, if he'd gotten his hands on one of those guns, he would have killed me. But he's not you. Sit up there.
Maybe next time you won't be so lucky. You can do what you want with us. They'll get you anyway, Luke. You just wait and see. Maybe I would be better off bucking that storm than staying in here. Maybe you'd be better off going back. What does that mean, give myself up? Well, you said the kid came at you with a knife. Maybe you can prove it. With the kid's father owning the whole town? Let's have a laugh together, huh, friend? I see what you mean. What would they do to you if you went back? They'd hang me. Maybe. Maybe only a jail sentence. Well, I'd rather be dead in that case. I know what you mean about jail. It's how I feel around here. Every day, just like the last one. Day after day. We think a little alike, honey. Anyway, I don't plan on going back dead or alive. By tomorrow night, I'll be in Mexico. been since you slept? Oh, yeah, so long I forgot. It'll be even longer before you reach the border. Well, don't worry about it. I'll make it. That's me, huh? Mm -hmm. That's not bad. Like it? Yeah, I like it. Can I have it? I'd be pleased. You know, I get uh, down to Mexico, I'm going to get a frame for this. So hang it up on the wall. And I'll tell everybody about the pretty girl who drew it for me. Luke. Yeah? Oh, it's almost dawn. You'll be leaving soon. Please take me with you. Mm, honey, don't start that again. I could help you. You can help me. I can saddle horses and I can ride as well as anyone. I know the desert. I could show you the way. You really want to get away from here, don't you? More than anything else in this world. All right, go on, saddle up two horses. You mean it? Go on, hurry. <sighs> That bad? The moment she gets in your way, you'll drop her. Come on now, she's a big girl. She can take care of herself. That kid's lived here all of her life. She's never been anyplace else. I wanted to just leave her alone. I think I can help her. Well, what are you going to do? Get her a job as a cook? Or send her on the way with Tim? That is, if you don't get yourself shot by that old man. No, I think uh, that I know her a little bit better than you do. She'll be all right. She's got spunk, like I said. Anyway, I sort of, uh, I sort of like her. And somebody's got to take her out of this trap. Maybe so, but not you, huh? Well, I think uh, I'm the only one who can do it, Cartwright. Well, at least we know where we stand.
with these, Miss Hemphill. All right. Use your head, Luke. You can't outrun that posse with a girl on your hands. Well, I tell you, I think I can. No. No, you're fooling yourself. Everything's ready. I'll just go pack a few clothes. She's not going with you, Luke. We've just been all through that car ride. I'm not going to let her get on that horse. No? Nope. Well, that kind of makes me feel like you're asking me to kill you. Would you? Is taking that girl with you that important? What's with you, Cartwright? Yesterday you didn't even know she existed. Anybody, stranger or not, deserves help when they're walking into trouble. Well, I don't understand you, friend. But you are right about one thing. It ain't that important to me. <laughs> Get her down in Mexico, look me up. Tell Marty I'm sorry. Where are you going in those clothes? I'm leaving, Grandpa. Uh, with him, with that chiller? No, you can't do that, I won't let you go. Marty! Where is he? Where's Luke? He's gone. No. No, he's taking me with him. No, he's not, Marty. He changed his mind. He promised me. He promised. I know. Oh, leave me alone. Silly dang girl. I ought to go in there and tan her high good. If you'd ever given her any understanding and a little warmth from your heart, it never would have happened. You started it. It all started when you came here last night. No, it didn't start with me. It started a long time ago, and you know when. I want you to go in there and tell her you're sorry. And promise her a chance in life. somebody you love turns their back on you and rejects you, it's... Well, 
It's just about the blackest time in the world. And now it's that kind of a time for you. But understand it, Marty. Don't blame your grandfather. Don't blame anybody for what's happened to you. Right now, it could never work out with you and Luke anyway. I know, I could say I have the right to talk another man down, but I don't mean that. I'm not even saying that he's absolutely wrong for you, but... Well, the way he is now, running away from himself, life or whatever it is, it's... Well, the only thing he could bring you is just more pain. You see, when you start running, you gotta be sure that you're not just exchanging one trap for another. You don't wanna do that, Marty. Life promises too much to just carelessly and foolishly throw it away. and your sketches show a real gift. But it's a gift that's got to grow. It's got to be helped. It's going to help me out here. Well, I think I might be able to help you. I've got some great friends in San Francisco I know that'll be glad to help. But you've got to help, too. Time a chance. Then you gotta give yourself a chance. Luke, you're back. You've come back for me. I knew you'd come back. What happened? I guess I was wrong. That posse didn't hold up a juniper. They rode on through. I saw him out there and doubled back. I figured you'd never make it. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I don't know. I'll think of something. Well, that posse on your heels is kind of late, isn't it? Well, it could be. But I think my luck's still running good. Up to now, friend. Marty, you stay away from him. I shut up, old man. Now, you women get inside. Hurry up. Larkin, get the saddle off this horse and get in the corral. Come on! Back that stage up. Get in the barn. You sure you know what you're doing, Marty? Listen to a man like that? He'll take me with him this time. You got a lot to learn about men. You in love with that guy? I don't know. I've never been in love. You'll know. When the right man comes along, you'll know. I knew when I was in love with Tim. Are you still? It's different now. Tim's weak where that Luke is strong. Say, maybe that's good. At least Tim ain't being chased by a posse who wants to kill him. I'm uh, sorry to call this reunion so soon after our last goodbye, boys, but uh, that's the way the cards were dealt. So let's all settle down. I don't think we're going to have long to wait. Do you expect to get out with just your gun? I don't think there's going to be a need for any gun. When you met that posse, I told you, your luck ran out. Not yet, my friend. I told you how to end up with him. Now, you just wait. They'll be shooting and killing. All right, here they come.
Just tell him your grandfather is sick, but keep him away from the house. But, Luke... Don't worry, honey. Everything will be fine. All right. I'll try to get rid of him. Howdy, ma'am. I'm Sheriff Ross, and these are my deputies. We're looking for a man by the name of Luke Martin. Have you seen any strangers around here? No. There hasn't been anyone here since the stage went through last night. We ran into it at Juniper Hole during the storm. Well, they just changed horses and kept on going. Why, in that storm? Well, one of the passengers was in a hurry to get to San Francisco. Yes, he talked about it, Juniper. And don't try anything, friend, unless you want that girl to get caught in a crossfire. And remember, all of you, any one of those bullets can hit you, too. You, uh, you here all alone, ma'am? Yes, except my grandfather. He's uh, been sick in bed for the last few days. Oh, that's too bad. Anything we can do for you? No, thank you. He'll be up in a day or so. And would you mind if we watered our horses? Of course not. Thanks for your trouble, ma'am. Maybe he took a chance and moved on. Well, I guess all we can do is push on and hope to catch up with him. Good girl, Mighty. Oh, like you said, she's got spunk. Yeah, when we get out of here, everything might just work out all right. You're a long way from getting out of here. I'm mounting up. And say it worked. Tim! I got it! What happened? It's stupid Tim. Why'd you have to do it, Tim? Why? For 5,000. How could you blame me? You big stiff. Is that all that's important to you? 5,000. You know what I could do with that kind of money? You could get yourself killed trying to get it. That's what you could do. No more. Working for other people, I... I could have had a place of my own. Darn fool, you, you never would have known what to do with it. You always picked the wrong things. The wrong horses, the wrong women. I picked you, Lucy. Killing. All he was thinking about was that reward money. So he died trying to get it. expect me to do? You saw him make his play. You know what he was trying to do. I'm fighting for my life, friend. How many lives do you figure yours is worth? As many as it takes to get me out of here. Luke! You haven't got a chance in there. At least they're not the girl and the old man. Why get them killed?
send Marty out with Lucy. Nobody leaves here. There's no sense in getting the women shot. What good will it do you? I'll show you what good it'll do me. Yeah, don't look like he's going for it. Now what? Well, he's pinned down. He can't get away. Sooner or later, he's got to give up. And listen, I don't want anybody risking his life when they don't have to. Tell the others. Yeah. What's happening? Why aren't they shooting out there? I know they got him pinned down. You don't worry about that. I'm still ahead of them. All they got to do is wait. Yeah? Well, I don't have to wait. I'm taking you out of here. Suppose I don't want to go. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. I'm going to do what I say. You're going to get her killed. That's what you're going to do. All he wants is a hostage. If you want to hide behind a woman's skirt, take me. I'm not asking you either. I'm taking Marty out of here. Well, I'm not going to let you do it, Luke. Don't get in my way, Cartwright. You know how it's going to have to be. All right. If you want me to kill you. No! Luke, I'll go. Don't kill him. It's funny how it's always my choice, isn't it? You figure I got to worry about everybody else's problems and never my own. Well, this time it's going to be different. Come on, Jesse, grab her! <laughs> Leave him alone, leave him. Well, it's all over, Luke. Well, what are you going to do, turn me in for the money? No, I don't need the money. But I don't see that you get a fair trial. Well, I'll tell you what you can do. You can pull that trigger. No, that's the difference between you and me. Well, I don't want to spend the rest of my life in jail. Do you understand that? You won't. They're going to hang you. Let's go. Look, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I wasn't much help, was I? Well, you're lucky you didn't go away with me. Now, maybe you'll get out of here. Listen, uh... There is one thing you can do for me. Well, that depends. You're going to get $5,000 when you take me out of that posse. Do you see she gets it? So she can get her chance. She's got it. station the other day, Mr. Cartwright, I, I almost shot you. But if you hadn't come, I'd have probably gone right on being a dang fool the rest of my life. Here they come. Well, Lucy, there's the address of the art teacher in San Francisco. Thank you, Adam. I'll put it right here in my little pocketbook. Don't worry, I'll deliver it safely. I'm sure you will. You're going to be all right? Sure. Maybe I'll find another Tim. With my luck, I always pick that kind of guy. Good luck. Goodbye, Adam. Goodbye, Grandpa. Goodbye, Marty. Now, I was only doing what I thought was right. Oh, I know. <laughs> Can't even look at you without seeing your ma. Same fresh innocence. Same trust. Same hunger for all those things I couldn't give her. You gave me love, just as you gave it to Ma. I understand it now. Oh, well, I, I better get those bags to the coach. Marty, while you're away, you'd better be a good girl or I'll tan your hide. 
If you don't, I will. Oh, thank you, Adam. Make it mean something, Marty. I will. Charlie, don't you like our punch? Oh, sure. Adam, it uh, looks like little Joe is rather taken with the charms of that southern bill. Yes, so it would seem. Punch. of the distinguished English Shakespearean actor, Walter Craigsmuir. And I am fortunate to have been able to prevail upon him to recite a short selection from the performance, which he'll be presenting at the Opera House tomorrow evening. Oh. Mr. Walter Craigsmuir. Ladies and gentlemen, mine host, Mr. Cartwright, as you have requested, some words from the immortal bard. Romans, countrymen, and lovers. Hear me for my cause, and be silent, that you may hear. And awake your senses, that you may the better judge. Look away. If there be any man in this assembly, any dear friend of Caesar's, to him I say, oh, I wish I was in love for Caesar, was no less look than away. his. Look away. If Don't you have enough manners to be demand, quiet, you got something again, Dixie Yank. Get out of here with your drunken rebel, Terry. There are just as many Yankee drunks, Stuart. You will not bring the Civil War into my house. All right, why don't you come out with it? Out with it? With what you're thinking. Well, that could be a dangerous request. I wasn't deaf last night when you made your remarks about Morvath. Joe, I didn't say anything about the girl. Just about what she represents. Which happens to be a, a system based on the enslavement of human beings. She doesn't believe in that any more than you do. She just feels the South has the right to, to work out their own problems. They don't want to be dictated to by a bunch of northern politicians. You mean it wants to hold on to slavery for another hundred years? I mean nothing of the kind. In either case, Morvath has nothing to do with it. Now, Joe, that's not true, and you know it. She and her father are bound to the South. And everything it stands for in the war. 
Now, look, lately you've been twisting everything and everybody into the war of politics. Now, after this, I want you to leave my girl out of it. Well, how can I? When she and her father are in it up to their necks. And they'll pull you in with them if you uh, don't come to your senses. You know, I'm getting a little tired of your prejudice against my girl. <sighs> and I'm getting tired of you being blinded by a girl when there's more important things to remember. What's all this about? Uh, just trying to open his eyes a little. Open his eyes about what? About Judge Terry. I'm not marrying Judge Terry. Now hold on there, boy. This is the first time you've mentioned anything about marriage? I wasn't sure before. Orvath and I are going to be married. And I don't care about her father's politics. I love her and she loves me. I think she'd say anything to get a cart right into the Terry faction. Ah, Joe, cut it off. Stop it! Oh, you know about Terry. You know Jefferson Davis has promised him the governorship to the territory if it goes Confederate. What's that got to do with Morvath? Well, I just got through telling you. Well, Adam, can a, can a young fella fall in love with a girl without war or politics coming into it? Not when it's Terry's daughter. Hey, Paul. Oh, Paul, we got a caller up the house. Who? It's Bill Stewart. He says he wants to talk to you. It's important. Well, tell him I'll be right along. Yes, sir. Now, how about both of you giving a little thought to the running of this ranch? And stop wasting your time on things that don't concern us. Well, I think that this war does concern us. And we've got a ranch to run. And starting right now, we're all going to remember it. We got an offer from McKeeson and Carson for 50,000 feet of undressed timber. I want you and Hoss to head north and mark out the timber for cutting. It's about time the herd was inspected, so you can pack your grub and take care of that. Maybe a couple of weeks on the trail will clear your heads and cool your tempers. Now, come on, there a couple of things out here I want you to do. Good afternoon, Ben. Hello, Bill. How are you? Never better. In fact, I'm full of beans and benevolence this afternoon, uh -huh. Ben. The legislature just gave us the nod. Uh, what nod? Statehood. They've called a convention to meet in Carson City next week. Thirty-six delegates from all over the Comstock to vote a resolution to join the Union. Now, we've divided up the territory, and you're going to represent the Ponderosa. Well, wait a minute now, Bill. You've got the biggest spread in the area, Ben. You're entitled to representation. Oh, naturally, you'll be able to vote whichever way you want, for or against statehood. But I know you pretty well, Ben, and I'm pretty confident that I can... Don't com be too confident, Bill. About what? About the way I'm going to vote. Ben, you see what's going on in town. Terry's already lining up delegates to defeat a statehood resolution. He figures to lick us in the convention and then shove us over into the Confederacy. That's just so much talk. Talk, is it? The law says all statehood needs is a two-thirds majority. I've got 23 delegates pledged to me. That's one short. I need your vote, Ben. And Lincoln needs the silver. He needs it bad. Yeah. Yes, he needs it bad. And so does Jefferson Davis need it bad. And if neither one of them gets it, the war will die of its own poverty. Ben Cartwright, you've got your head deeper in the ground than the deepest diggings. Bill, this war has nothing to do with us here in the territory. But it's already divided my sons, one against the other. I don't want any part of it. And if statehood means war, then I certainly don't want any part of that. Now, you're going to have to find your boat somewhere else. You're not going to find it here. I never thought I'd see the day that you'd abandon your country. You don't mean that. Don't I? What are you thinking about? I was thinking about the dance the other night. Oh. I'm sorry about what happened. His feelings are running pretty high, though. But that wasn't what I was thinking about, little Joe. 
I was thinking about the dress Emily wore. Did you notice it? Her dress? No. No, I didn't even notice Emily. I understand that dress came all the way from London. Right through the British blockade. There across the country. It was a beautiful dress. Father said I could order one from Paris, France next year. Well, we'll have a party so you can show it off. We've been at a party in our house in ever so long. I love parties, little Joe. Where everyone looks so nice. The men are all standing up so straight and proper, wearing their best clothes. The ladies can show off their latest gowns. Well, we'll have lots of parties. even invite somebody else, I don't know. Of course, most of the time it'll be just you and I. See, I don't want to share you with anybody else. Little Joe, someday I, I want a large white house with six tall pillars reaching clear up to a balcony. A house like the one my father tells me he used to have back in Virginia. All right, I'll build you a house like that. I've got the perfect spot for it, too, right on the Ponderosa. It's a, it's a real high bluff with a view as far as a man's eye can see. I'll build a little road up to it. Oh, it sounds so wonderful. I just hope nothing ever happens to change that. Hey, you know what could happen to change that? I love you more than anything in the world. Thank you very much, Judge Terry. Lovely color, isn't it? Well, sir, have we demonstrated to you that we can provide one or two little items that won't insult a European palate? The dinner was superb. The simple miner of my native Wales manages somehow to subsist in a slightly less uh, ornate manner, I must confess. <laughs> but then your mind yields silver. Ours merely coal. And that silver, sir, is most important. If we block statehood, and I think we can, there'll be no silver for Mr. Lincoln's war chest. I gather you're referring to your civil war. Yours as well as ours. Well, I wonder how in the world you arrive at that conclusion. You know how I arrive at it. You people are praying for a southern victory. Your cotton industry has got to have a southern victory in order to survive. That's common knowledge. Well, I must confess it wasn't common knowledge to me. But then I know absolutely nothing about politics. I'm prepared to accept your incognito, sir. My incognito? Your disguise. Oh, I know what the word means. But what, may I ask, am I supposed to be disguising? Mr. Craigs, now, don't make me spell out every sentence like I paid from McGuffey's reader. We were promised an agent to work with us. For the last six months, we've been expecting that agent to make his appearance. An agent here in Virginia City? You think I'm he? Well, aren't you? Good heavens, no. I'm an actor, sir. A strolling bear, a mummer. Don't toy with me, sir. We're bleeding to death, fighting for our lives. The silver under our feet can stop that bleeding, but we need help. If I were this man you're talking about, how do you suppose the people this so-called agent represents can help you? Invest in our future. Invest in the only thing that can stop this war with victory to our cause. The South is impoverished, crippled, desperate. But we will win, sir. We must win. But we need money for men. We need money for arms and ammunition. With money, we can block statehood. With the help that you people give us, we could keep this great silver treasure of the Comstock load from falling into the hands of the enemy. Mr. Terry, Mr. Cartwright. How are you, sir? This rumor, Joseph, is it true your father won't join Stuart's delegation? Yes, that's right, sir. He's against statehood at this time. Well, sir, you heard, didn't you? No two-thirds majority, no statehood. I'm only an actor, Judge Terry, nothing more. That reminds me, I must get back to the hall. Thank you for an excellent dinner. I'm sorry I have to run like this. Mr. Terry, Mr. Cartwright. What's Mr. Craig's Muir's interest in our problems, Father? All in good time, my dear. Peter, 
Yes, sir. There's the door. I've been waiting for you. You're going to be late for your performance. There are more important things in a performance. I have a task for you, a very important one. Yes? You're going to San Francisco. San Francisco, Mr. Craigsmill? That's right. And when? Now. Immediately. At once. But the curtain goes up in ten minutes. Blast the curtain, boy. I told you this was important. You know where to take us. The same place. Are you sure you won't need me? Oh, I was able to dress myself before we met. I think I still remember how. I'm depending on you, Peter. I'll remember, sir. Good luck to you. And don't forget. It's vitally important. I understand. Owen, oh, you remember. Curtain in ten minutes. Morning, boys. Good morning, Paul. Morning. You all set? Yeah, we're all the way, Paul. Well, I figure it shouldn't take you any more than a couple of weeks to get the tree blazing done. You better move out. We'll see you later, Paul. Yeah, have a good trip. Right. Keep an eye out for the Paiutes. Oh, we will. Time you got started, isn't it? As soon as I finish eating. Well, I hope you'll both feel differently by the time you get back. I'm gonna feel just the same. If he doesn't change, that's his problem. Don't fly off at me, boy. Well, then you tell Adam to keep his mouth shut about the girl I love. Don't raise your voice to me. I have no chip on my shoulder to be knocked off. I'm sorry. Joseph, I've been in love, too, in my lifetime. Now, you think that she is the most beautiful, most wonderful creature that ever lived, don't you? I know she is. Well, you're wrong. Your mother was. Taking a, a wife is more than just taking a woman. There's her family that you have to consider, too. Oh, come on, Pa. I'm not marrying her family. But you still can't forget the family. And you can't ignore the fact that there's a hate festering this country, which is like an open wound. We're a divided country. Homes, families, fathers and sons not daring to speak their own minds to one another. I don't understand. Yesterday you said we should stay out of this. Yes, I did. All right, then why is it my problem now? Before this is over, this war, it'll be everybody's problem. Because sooner or later, sooner or later we're going to have to make a decision. And whatever that decision, we're all going to suffer and bleed Maybe die. Each one of us is going to have to make his own decision, Pa. I better get started.
Next time we'll hang you next to Abe Lincoln. You dirty gray belly. Stuart, what are you trying to do in this town? Starting riots in the street, fist brawls. I was only hanging up a banner. In case you've forgotten, Judge Terry, free speech is still allowed in this territory. I've not forgotten that, or many other things. Well, remember that, before you order your thugs to start jumping on people. Southerners are no brawlers, sir. My son was no brawler. He was a soldier. He fought with General Jackson. He died for the wrong cause, Judge. I'm sorry for him. The wrong cause. You are the man who's leading the people to the wrong flag. Your statehood, it will fail. It's already a foregone conclusion. You'll not get your needed votes. The Nevada Territory will go to the Confederacy, sir. Judge Terry, I'm afraid I have to disagree with you. I honor your view, sir. I know you believe in them sincerely. I know how bravely your son fought. I've been hoping that the Comstock somehow would be able to keep out of it. But it looks like we can't keep out of it, doesn't it? And if it comes to making up our minds about going one way or the other, Union or Confederate, I think we'd better go Union. Too many men have died putting this Union together for me to stand by and see it destroyed. I... I guess you can count on the Ponderosa bill. I'll go to Carson and vote for statehood. God bless you, Ben. I've got my two thirds. Hooray! Yeah! Morning, Daddy. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Well, you haven't eaten any breakfast at all. I've just had this telegram. Oh? How to do it. How to use it so that its value won't be dissipated. Marbeth? Yes, Daddy. Joseph Cartwright. Little Joe? What about it? Where is he? He's gone with the men to check the herd. He'll be back when? He ought to be back this afternoon. This afternoon. And his brothers? Well, they won't be back for another week. They're blazing trees up north. Daddy, why are you asking all this? I want you to come with me. Come with you where? Ponderosa, uh, you finish your breakfast and get a bonnet. While I have Gamaliel hitch up the trap. Daddy, what's in that telegraph? Ammunition for the battle. The only ammunition, it seems, I'm to be issued in this war. I won't let you use little Joe in your war with Mr. Stewart. My war is not with Stewart. It's with those men who are trying to steal the territory of Nevada for the northern side. Whatever you call it, Daddy, I don't care. I won't let you use little Joe. And don't ask me to help you use him. Do you think I want to? Do you think I want to use my own daughter? We must win. Doesn't your brother's dying have any meaning for you? Daddy, please. Then don't make me believe that he died for nothing. This is your war, too, isn't it, Morvath? You know it is, Daddy. Then if you won't do it for me... Won't you do it for your brother? And Joseph, too. Believe me, he'll be much better off if he declares himself with us instead of men like Stuart. I don't know. I've got to think about it. No, my dear, you haven't time. Do you realize how many boys like your brother have died while we've been sitting talking here? I'll get my bonnet. Well, 
boss just found. How you doing, Pop? <laughs> good, good. Oh. How'd it go, son? Uh, just a lot of cattle. Well, how'd you find them? Well, they're not too scattered. They're getting fat. Good. The fences are all in good shape. Good. How are the men? Men are fine. Real good. good. You, uh... You hear anything from Adam? No, 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 not yet. He and Hoss are up in the north section. They got plenty of work to do up there. Well, that's good. Hmm? Maybe he won't be so cantankerous when he gets back. Well, Judge, how nice to see you. Cartwright. Nice to see you again, Morvat. You're looking prettier than ever. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. It's good to see you, Cartwright. Well, thank you. Could we have a little talk? It's most important. Well, uh, certainly. Well, why don't we go into the house? I'll clean up a bit. Well, we can talk. Well, Morvath and I will be in in just a few minutes. Fine. What's so important? Joe. Mm -hmm. I missed you, darling. I miss you too, sweetheart. Brought you out here anyway. Your father's going to the convention. I thought he wanted to stay out of it. He's not going to stay out of it. Joey's going to vote for statehood. Statehood, huh? Maybe we better get in there. Before we go in, my father, I want you to know he's doing what he has to do and what he thinks is best. Well, you've got all this land here. Clear down to the lake. Now, Judge, you don't have to tell me where the Ponderosa boundaries lie. What are you getting at? Well, just this. You've got all this land and only one delegate going down to Carson City to represent it. Now, well, the apportionment committee says that that's not fair. Well, I... I think I can speak for the Ponderosa. Not you alone. Not anymore. Now, here's a telegraph received this morning. Replying to the committee's request. Ponderosa is now authorized to send two delegates to the convention. Now, well, what does Bill Stewart think of this? What Stewart thinks about it has nothing to do with it. Well, I, 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 I don't quite understand what... There are only Cartwrights on the Ponderosa. We know that. So pick one to be your delegate. There are four of you here. Well... Two of the boys won't even be back until after the convention, and... You knew that, too, didn't you, Judge? Well, that's not important now. You read the telegraph? Yeah. Yes, I read the telegraph. And this whole thing is beginning to smell like a... Smell like nothing, Cartwright. We're only asking another representative of the Ponderosa to come down to Carson City as a delegate. The way he votes is his own business. Don't take me for a fool, Terry. You don't believe that, and neither do I. You have your beliefs, Cartwright. I have mine. And may I remind you that several days ago, you told me you honored my views. May I remind you that several days ago, you didn't try to come between me and my sons. What grounds have you for such an accusation? Judge, I'm just wondering something. I'm wondering... What your son, who died at the Battle of Keensburg, would think of you now. Don't try to shame me with the memory of my son, Cartwright. He died fighting for the same cause for which I would gladly lay down my own life. I'm not questioning your beliefs, sir. Only the methods you use in accomplishing them. Hi. Well, this should interest you, Joseph. Good day, Mr. Cartwright. Come along, Morvath. Quite a drive back to Virginia City. Morvath, I'll see you later. Goodbye, Mr. Cartwright. Little Joe. request for another delegate from the Ponderosa. That's right. With Adam and Hoss away, that makes you the logical candidate, doesn't it? No, I don't want to be a delegate. I'm afraid you have no choice, son. Yes, I do. This is not my problem. No. But it has been presented to us and to you. You know, this is more of a problem for me than it is for anybody else. I know. I know. 
And when it comes time for you to vote, you're going to have to vote not because of the way you feel about a girl or about me, but because of the way you feel about the issue. It's a problem. But it's also responsibility. you be doing that could be more wonderful than this? I'll tell you what I could be doing. I could be sitting in Virginia City with a great big ice cool beer in front of me. That's what, or, or one of them roasted pigs with, with an apple stuck in his mouth. Uh, well, I owe you the apple. Now, if you get some wood, we can get the beans heated up. That's what I mean. Beans. Him before? I think so. But if I'm right, I don't know what he's doing here. Why? Where'd you see him? Back in town, uh, the actor, uh, Craigsmuir. There's no address on this. <sighs> Thought he was just an actor. Who? Craigsmuir. Oh, ain't he? Take a look at that. What do you make of this, Adam? Conspiracy. Conspiracy? All that talk about cotton? Yep. Who would want cotton bad enough to do something like this? British textiles. They've already got their privateers trying to run the Union blockade off Charleston. And it's no secret they want the South to win. They need that cotton to keep their mills operating. Yeah. According to that letter, there's, there's somebody right here that's willing to guarantee them that the South will win. That's right. Money. Guns and ammunition. And men. I never thought Judge Terry would go this far. Oh, now, come on, Adam. How do you know for sure it's Judge Terry? I don't, but I know someone who does. I'm glad to see you. See Wondering you. when you'd get here. Mr. Cartwright? Sir? Is Morbath here? Oh, yes, yes. She's been expecting you. She's resting in her room. Ben, there you are. Oh, well. Welcome to Carson City. We're going to make history here Wednesday. Say, uh, we're going to have a little get-together in my room. You know, all the pledged delegates. You got here just in time to be in on it. Uh, come on along and bring the youngster with you. Oh, he's not pledged yet, Stuart. How are you, Joseph? Oh, sir, that's right. My vote isn't committed yet. To anybody? No, not to anybody. That's honest enough, boy. Make up your own mind. Little Joe. Good 
Good to see you. We we're wondering when you'd get here. We we're just going upstairs to see you. I'm sure you two have much to talk about. Place is bad. The boy isn't going to vote against us, is he? We found your man a couple of days ago. The Paiutes got him. Did? He was very young. Unfortunately, a lot of young men are dying these days. These are difficult times. Yeah. And fellows like you are trying to make them worse. I don't think I quite understand you, sir. And let me try. Who is this letter to, and what's more important, who was it about? And just who are you? I could say I'm just a strolling player, an actor, man of the boards. That wouldn't satisfy you. Nope. Sure wouldn't. Then let me just say the people I represent need the South's cotton to keep their mills rolling. Enough to foster war? Oh, that's a very moral approach. But then you don't need that cotton. Who are you trying to make the deal with? I'm sorry, I can't tell you that. Well, I'll tell you what I can do. I can break you apart. He could, you know. All right. It's not of great importance now. My value here is gone. Your man is Judge Terry. Well, looks like you were right all along, Adam. We just had to be sure. And now we are. State the delegates would be glad to hear this. Gentlemen, I'm afraid you're too late. Stato will be defeated, and Nevada voted into the Confederacy. Well, after they hear what we've got to say, I wouldn't be so sure. It won't matter now, thanks to your brother. What do you mean by that? Why don't you go to the convention and find out? after my vote every time I stick my nose out of the room. Well, they're just trying to be helpful. I must think I need an awful lot of help. Then. Joe, you're on the delegate list as uncommitted. That's right, I am. Have you decided which way you're going to vote? I'd like to say I haven't. I have it over and done with, but I haven't. I just can't decide yet. It's a pretty hard decision for me to make. I'm sure of that, darling. I can just imagine what you've been going through. I'm also sure you know how I feel and how much this means to me. It's already cost me a brother. I'm committed, little Joe. I've taken a side. I just hope we're both on the same one. You know I've considered that. I'll do the best I can. Please remember it. It's like my pa says, I must vote the way I think it's right. He's right, of course. Thanks for understanding. Well, it's time. I guess it is time, isn't it? Remember, whatever happens in there, I love you. I know that. I'm just hoping this is all over. You'll say it again.
Now's the time, Ben. Do you know yet how your boy's going to vote? The chips are down. They're going to call our hand. Bill, the decision is not mine or yours. Where does he stand? I don't know, Father. I'm sorry. He must stand with the South. Class is required into the hall, sir. I have something to say to these gentlemen. Sorry, I can't allow... I have something to say to this convention. I'm sorry, sir, but nobody can speak here without proper credentials as a delegate. Now, with your approval, gentlemen, the clerk will now call the roll. Gentlemen, it's important. I think you should hear it before you vote. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, this man is not a delegate. I demand that he be removed from the hall. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, please. The convention is in order. It'll only take a moment. Or is this convention afraid to hear the truth? Hold the delegates. We can't wait all day. If there's any further interference, I'll have the sergeant at arms handle the situation. Mr. Chairman, my son asked a question which deserves an answer. Is this convention afraid to hear something which may be of vital importance to it? He has a right to be heard. Not here, he hasn't. He says it's important. It's a Yankee trick. Hey, now, wait a minute. I'm a delegate. I have credentials. My brother says it's important. I believe him. I think we should hear him out. If it's vitally important. My brother and I found this letter on a dead man's body on the Ponderosa. It was written by one Walter Craigsmuir, an actor whom some of you may remember has been appearing in Virginia City for the past several weeks. What are we waiting for? I say begin the boat. It reads, I've been assured that given our support in terms of money rushed from San Francisco to Carson City for men, guns, and ammunition, the Nevada Statehood Convention can be stampeded and the territory enjoined to the Confederacy. As this would ensure Union defeat through depriving Mr. Lincoln of the wealth of the Comstock and thereby ensure a continued flow of cotton to British mills, I would recommend we do business on the terms suggested. Signed, Craigsmuir. <laughs> Who assured him? This convention has the right to know the answer to that question. Gentlemen, that man is Judge David Terry. That's true. I do not deny it. But what I did, I did because I had to do. And I'm proud of it. I believe in my cause. And I'll fight to win it with any means I know and by every strength that I possess. Is there any man here whose faith in his cause is so small that he will not seek victory in a similar manner? No, we will never subscribe to that because we have faith in what we believe. We honor it. We will not destroy it by justifying any and all means to gain our ends. Here, here. Judge. You took too much on yourself. You went too far. No. Let's vote. Gentlemen, the clerk will now poll the delegates. I'm sorry, Morvan. 
I'm sorry, too. For all of us. But especially for him. What do you think he'll do now? Well, with Nevada joining the Union, he'd like to go back to Virginia. And what about you? I must go with him. You understand, don't you? I understand there's a war between us. Wars end sometime. <laughs> 